So this morning I saw a video pop up that Brad and Eddie got their Stradivarius violins. Two Strad violins. In our studio right now. How the Strad sound? Yeah, that's really? Play. That is super exciting. Oh, we got goosebumps. Can you guys I thought you guys might like to know a little bit more about those instruments. So uh, let's have a quick look. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I love the way they started, you know, the little thing. Did you break that? You gotta sell all your organs. Totally freaking out because they bumped the instrument a little bit. That is hilarious. We just got two Strad violins delivered from New York City. Two Strad violins in our studio right now. Now Strad violins, if you followed us before, they are very rare instruments, but also known to be played by the best. Our concert in November was the Singapore Symphony Orchestra. These are like the golden Strad period too. So each one is absolutely invaluable. So don't drop it. Can you imagine? So that's pretty exciting. So Teresio is letting them use the two strads for their concert in Singapore. What's really interesting is that both violins were made in the same year. And uh, I personally think they are just incredibly different. The model they're based on is very similar, but they're such different instruments. They were both made in 1708. So that makes them 314 years old. That's pretty amazing. 314 year old violins. Yeah, it's crazy how well things were made and how long they last. Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> anyway, they're both made in 1708. So what are the chances we had Two Golden Age Stradivari violins from the same year. Even Paganini was born later. And they both, actually, we put a shot of rest on already, but can you guys see they're both one piece So they're backs. both one piece backs. Beautiful and, uh, pieces. Anyway, I think we should look play at the a little timber, bit. But you look at the timber, they're actually very different pieces of timber. I'll talk about the actual instruments a little bit later. Here we go. Need to hear how the strad sound? Yeah, let's really? play um, the opening of the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna join in. Whoa! It's not like she goes really deep. What did you do? How did you hear it? Okay, 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 we're just joking. Prank, prank, prank. prank, prank. prank, prank. Whoa, that's yeah. a strad. We are talking about strads today. So two strads from 1708. You've got the Regent Superb and the Empress Katerina, which actually belonged to Catherine the Great. That's right, Catherine the Great. Do you know that she actually gave a Stradivarius violin to Viotti? That violin is now known as the Viotti Strad. Isn't that cool? She liked her strads, I guess. I don't think she played. I think she just owned them. Those guys are good players, oh, aren't they? Can you guys see it? He got goosebumps. I really like those guys, you know, and they're, they're just very honest and... <laughs> see the way uh, Brett just adjusted the violin, but you can see they've actually got them lying on a cleaning cloth, you know, so the scroll doesn't scrape on the table. And uh, that's really important to really, you know, you've, the, the varnish of those instruments is so valuable. Gosh, they're good players though. I think it's pretty amazing. It's beautiful. Uh, we should try this in a concert hall. Yes, let's try these violins in a concert hall. If I have to say, 
So when someone gives you an instrument and says, here you go, play this like 15 or $20 million instrument, um, you would treat it with an enormous amount of respect. And, uh, and, and, and you would just play your very best. I think they were really well-made instruments, like Stradivarius knew his stuff. I mean, he was a legend. Uh, but there's also some really good instruments out there now. There are some very good makers all around the world. And they have done double blind tests to show, you know, that, that people sometimes cannot distinguish between the Strad and the other instrument, but they had to do the blind test double so that the player wouldn't know because if the player knew they were playing a Strad, it you know, it you, you're kind of in awe. I mean, you know, if someone just said to me, here you go, hold a Vincent van Gogh painting, I, I would just be in awe. You know, like, I, I mean, you know, to to behold the work of a master. And, and I'm the same when I look at Stradivarius violins, you know, he was an absolute master. But the instruments aren't, you know, twenty million worth $20 million, or the sound isn't $20 million better than a really good thirty or $40,000 violin. Um, just wanted to point that out because there's hope, you know, don't, don't lose hope. Yeah, there are some very good instruments out there for players who can't afford the $20 million. It's the same as, uh, say you got Elvis's guitar. Now, how much would someone pay to get Elvis's guitar? You know, probably a whole lot. And it's kind of similar to that. So the guitar probably isn't better than some other guitars by the same maker or even some other guitars by other makers. Um, but because Elvis played it, it would be worth a whole lot. A lot. And it's similar with Stradivarius instruments. People are just willing to pay a whole lot and they will outbid each other, uh, you know, uh, to, to own one of these precious instruments. And they are precious because, you know, he died in 1737 and he ain't making any more. Okay, uh, let's keep going. It's really cool. They've got like 84 doors all around us at the top and you can kind of control the sound quality by opening and closing it so it becomes dry and wet to your preferences. It's funny, I bumped into Eddie uh, just before they left for Singapore. Actually, the day they were leaving for Singapore recently and uh, we had a little chat, so yeah. He was pretty so excited at the prospect of getting the strads. Right, let's play a game, Carl. How far can we do it? <laughs> While they try these in a concert hall, uh, I won't talk as much about them, uh, about that aspect of it. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about it, but I will talk you through the two instruments that they're going to try. So the first instrument is the Empress Katerina. And uh, what you have to remember that instruments of that age will actually, um, you know, they will have a lot of repairs. Like over 300 years, some damage will happen unless it's the Messiah violin, which is in an almost immaculate condition. But this isn't the Messiah. Okay, so let's have a look at the Empress Katerina. And... Uh, Hang on a second. Oh yeah, here we go. So the first thing we are going to look at is the top plate. Now this this is a beautiful violin. It's uh, so the timber is from the Fiume Valley, uh, which is actually the same valley as where I got this top plate from. So the top plate, the timber of the top plate, is from the Fiume Valley. You can you can see the the um the annual rings uh which are um these little lines um going down the instrument so there there are summer grains and winter grains so if we go down a bit um have a look so this i'll, I'll choose a very wide grain so this grain here is a summer grain and the one next to the dark narrow one is a winter grain 
and that actually so the the summer the winter grains are very strong that that means that the instrument uh from from end to end so from here to there the top plate actually has a lot of strength so it doesn't move much in this direction but sideways so the summer grains are actually quite soft so so because they're soft it moves very easily in this direction so Stradivarius picked some really fine timber it's very beautiful you'll see on some old German instruments you'll see some even finer grain uh, some of the grain is just so fine it's unbelievable uh, but here towards the middle it's it's very narrow grain now let's have a look uh, so it's a beautiful instrument it's had a lot of repairs and and you can see here there's been a crack here crack here the edges a lot of the edges would have been replaced I'll show you a close-up later um, there's some cracks down here, here. Something's happened around here, around the chin rest. You can see all the varnish is worn off. It most certainly would have had F-hole cracks. So let's let's go to the uh, finer, the image. There's like a close-up, close-up of the middle of the instrument. Take a look at this. So this is just the middle of the instrument. Uh, and you can see there's been a bit of repair under the bridge and that's very common I mean an instrument of that age not to have damage under the bridge is very unusual something weird happening with the grain on the base side here I don't know what that is but that wasn't there when he made it it's also a few cracks here there's a tiny crack here they're not very obvious they're actually very very well repaired uh, there's some cracks here uh, a crack here you can see it uh, a couple of grains have been replaced here you can just see the little marks just here and here um, but very good repairs a beautiful color uh, a bit lighter color and uh, if we go back take a look so usually in here you get some of the original varnish so it's had a really beautiful varnish color so it's a bit of a, um, you know, it's sort of a, a, a beautiful orange brown kind of color. There's not a lot of original varnish left. Usually you get a little bit in the ribs here and uh, you'll also get some on the back of the instrument. So sometimes you get a little bit of original varnish right here and through here. But it's beautiful made, uh, beautifully made. Now the corner here is stunning. Wow. Yeah, just really beautiful workmanship. It's got a really nice, uh, nice piece of timber, quite fine grain. Uh, so really well made instrument. Now that violin belonged to Catherine the Great, the Russian. Uh, yeah, the Catherine the Great, who was Russian. Well, she gave Viotti his violin, maybe late 1700s. OK, so beautiful instrument. Yeah. Oh, the scroll, really nice scroll. Uh, see here, you can see some bushings there and there. Um, some more bushings here. There's a bit of a repair. You can see some kind of repair here. I don't exactly know what it is. Actually, I think they may have. Yes, they have. That This whole area here has been lined. So it's kind of doubled. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a lot of repairing. Okay, take a look at the sides. So you can see the hand patch here got a bit of wear and tear. You can actually see that the top plate has been uh, that the edges have been doubled just here uh, and here. So a lot of those edges uh, are not original. I mean, they would have worn off years ago, but they just replace them. That's kind of a restoration technique. So it's called the Empress Katerina, so uh, the Empire, Emperor of Russia. Um, it was sold by Hills and Sons in the late 1800s and again in 1910 by Marcotel and Caressa and Francais and Merning and Son. 
So some of those people probably did some of those rest restorations that the people had sold these instruments, like Hills and Soul, Sons, very well-known, Sylvestre and Macotel, very well-known violin makers, Francais, very well-known, and Merning and Son, uh, also very well-known violin makers. Okay, let's have a look at the other instrument, the Regent Superb also made in 1708. It, those two instruments are um, two of 14 instruments that still exist from that year. Uh, so that's quite a lot of instruments and, and a lot of Stradivarius instruments are missing and lost. So they think that he nearly made twice as many as there are today. So he may have made, um, you know, maybe 25 instruments that year, and he didn't make those instruments. Uh, purely himself, he had quite a few people working with him. Uh, some very good violin makers worked with Stradivarius over the years. Okay, let's have a look at this instrument. Uh, it's in a quite a different condition. It's got a much darker color. And I don't fully trust that that is actually the original color. Uh, let's have a look at the top plate first of all. Here we go. Yeah, it's quite dark, isn't it? Um, here we go. Oh, wow. It's, yeah, instantly you can see it's had a lot more visible damage to it. There's a crack up here on the top plate. Uh, there's a grain replaced. There, oh wow, look around the bridge. Around the bridge you can hardly, uh, yeah, there, it, it's very spongy. Like you can, the, the retouching is very opaque. So his varnish normally is really clear and you can see the grains, but there it's really opaque. So they have like non-transparent. So they've done a lot of retouching around there. Let's go further down. Oh yes, look around the bottom here. There are numerous cracks. Okay, there's one here. One here, one here, one here, here, here. Uh, look at these edges. They're matching up well here, but they're not fully matching up here. So a lot of these edges would have been replaced as well. Gorgeous back here, so those wild flames I was talking about. Oh, big repair here. Uh, they look interesting. They don't look as wild here as they did Hmm, okay. Yeah. Oh, you can see a tiny bit of black. So he used to do a lot of black around the edges. And you can see a tiny bit of black left on the edges here of the of the scroll. That's cool. Uh, again, you can see some bushings here. It's had a neck graft. I'm sure it's had bushings here as well. What's happened here? That can't be possible. You don't usually have instruments without bushing. I, th I think there's been some kind of restoration done for sure. Whoa, look at the big crack here between the, between the A and the D peg. That's very common actually. And there's also quite often a crack up here. Uh, let's have a look. It's got more bushings here. I think that... Oh, I don't know. That's that same kind of retouching here that's a bit opaque, so it's a bit hard to tell. Okay, let's have a look. But you know it's not original. That's the thing side. There's a bit of original varnish in here, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's a much more red colour, isn't it? It's... Uh, that's quite nice. Apparently he used cochineal for the more red colored instruments. Ah, wow, nice. Just beautiful, isn't it? Let's have a look at the other side. Here we go. There. Oh my God, look at the hand patch. It's had a sticker put over the top of it. But take a look at like there's a lot of wearing here. That is crazy. Those edges, some of those edges would have had to have been doubled. They're very thin just here as well, quite worn off uh, around the hand patch. So a lot of repairs around the hand patch. So guys, clean your violin. And if you see wearing on your hand patch, 
make sure you get it retouched early. You know, you can protect it. Anyway, it's a, a, still a beautiful instrument. Like I said, it's had a lot of repairs on the top plate, on the sides. Just a stunning instrument. So it was the Regent Superb. I don't know why it was called that. It's been in Vero's hand, Roger Milan. So Vero, the violin maker Henry Vero owned it. Oh, wow, for a good almost 20 years. Yep, he was a violin maker who lived until 1971. He was born 1896. So definitely a less uh, less well-known instrument because just, you know, it wasn't owned by anyone quite as famous as the other one. Uh, and it's really, its history isn't really known prior to 1941. So that's that's really not a lot of information on the instrument. That's kind of crazy. Beautiful instrument though, but here there you go, you know a little bit more about those violins. They were both both made in 1708. I think during that time Lombardy was actually in Austrian hands, uh having been taken from the Spanish which actually meant that the steel quality, because um, uh, I used to use really good Spanish steel, uh, the steel's quality of the tools um, uh, decreased. So uh, the the you know the Spanish um, Toledo, that's it, Toledo steel. So Toledo they made the really good steel. And so they used to get Toledo steel for their tools in Cremona. And then once the uh, once the Austrian to Austrians took over, they no longer weren't able to get that Toledo steel for some time, especially while they were at war. Anyway, that's a bit of history. Uh, Stradivarius was was very well off. Uh, being born 1644. He would have been for he would have been sixty four years old, and he was really at the height of his business. Uh, it makes me feel good because uh, I haven't made as many violins as I'd like to. But you know, being in my fifties, I'm still going to make more instruments. I'm making one at the moment. It's really beautiful. But that's not why I'm talking to you. Um, so anyway, um, nice to see that the, the guys. So there's a bit of background on the instruments. Let's have a quick look uh, at them we'll playing them there. in the hall. It's so cool what they can do with the hall, right? Those those thingos. I mean, that hall is, yeah, that, that looks really amazing. Now, remember, they are playing in an empty hall. And also, I can hear a lot of echo. So that, that gives the hall a bit of a bathroom sound which which always makes uh always makes instruments sound way better okay so let's have a look So they're playing the Empress um, Katerina. I really like the sound of the Empress Katerina. It, it's got a brightness. And then now let's have a listen yeah. to the other one. So in the upper register, to me, it sounds not quite as resonant. Uh, now, you've got to remember, so the hall is empty. They're going to play to a crowd of uh, 1,800 people. Well, so the hall's going to be full, and, and people will actually dampen the sound. So it's not going to sound the same when the people are sitting in it. Um, so it's a very big difference between an empty hall and a full hall. Also, um, Eddie's sitting towards the front, 
uh, you want to probably sit more than halfway back if you really want to hear the carrying quality of a set of an instrument. I mean, he was listening more to the sound and how it, how it sounded to them. So, um, but one thing I always like to do to when I'm trying out instruments to sit further back, but an empty hall is not an, a full indication of the sound of an instrument, uh, the, the full potential of an instrument. But I get the feeling that the Empress Katerina will have a really good carrying uh, capacity. I'll be, I'll be very curious to, I'm, I'm going to listen to the concert when they stream and, uh, I think I might be over in Europe at the time. I'm not quite sure, but uh, I'm definitely going to listen to it. And uh, it'll be interesting to see which one has a bit more um, carrying capacity. So the Empress Katerina has black fittings, uh, like a black chin rest and tail piece. So they, you know, if you can't distinguish them quickly, that's what you can do to distinguish them. It's also a little bit lighter. I said, she's a little bit lighter. Chloe, do you want to come listen with us? Um, yeah. Yeah, we should get Chloe's opinion. We have uh, Chloe Sensei to help us judge. Hello. <laughs> Which one did you prefer from Brett? I felt like the first one was brighter and this one was like sweeter in sound. It's both unique. It's interesting how they give their opinions because, I mean, opinions are very subjective. So uh, today I listened to a cellist, um, a cellist tried a couple of instruments and he really liked my uh, Salvatore Lombardi cello because it's got that deeper, richer kind of quality. And it's a really nice cello to just enjoy playing like he's learning Bach at the moment. But... Um, um, you know, and, and, and so uh, quite often people who are a little bit more introverted will tend to like a little bit deeper sounding, a little bit more sonorous uh, and, and possibly even less carrying instruments better. And and personally, I think it's just a reflection of character, uh, you know, and uh, no, sorry, it's just a reflection of a personality and uh and that's the beauty of instruments. Each instrument is so unique and you find one that matches your personality. So, um, and, and, and it sounds the way you want to sound. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So to help us judge. Chloe's quite a legend too, as a violinist. <laughs> Which one did you prefer from Brett? I felt like the first one was brighter and this one was like sweeter. And it's both unique. Yeah, it's interesting. Like Chloe also says the first one's brighter and the brighter sound is going to carry over. For example, if you're playing with an orchestra, uh, the brighter sounding instrument will, you know, carry a lot easier than the darker sounding instrument. Also note that the um, Regent Superb has the boxwood chin rest and tailpiece. So if you're watching the concert, you'll be able to tell them apart very easily. So the Katerina, Empress Katerina has the black tailpiece and chin rest and uh, the Regent Superb has the um, boxwood um, tailpiece and chin rest. Uh, they've both got black pegs. <laughs> video though and it's so exciting that Teresio is lending them those instruments it's not going to make them better violinists but what a beautiful opportunity to play those instruments by a great master and also to be able to to play it in concert for the audience and like you know like I said they're going to be streaming that um, 
that concert. So that's going to be available for everyone to watch at some point. So that is super exciting. So good on you guys. It's really great that you are getting this opportunity and, and, and kind of highlighting these instruments. I've seen quite a lot of strats over, um, you know, through throughout my life, I've I've seen you know obviously some in museums, but I've also seen quite a few with soloists I've met, and uh, also a whole lot um, you know through colleagues just in workshops of colleagues and where I used to work in Germany, uh, there was always quite a few there, um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's always really exciting to take a really good look at the master. There were some great masters in Italy at the time and in Germany, but the Italian masters obviously um, got, you know, became a lot more pol popular. They have an amazing varnish as well. They have those beautiful oil and uh, rosin based varnishes that just, you know, they, they just they're just incredible. So anyway, there you go. I just thought you might want to know a little bit more about those instruments and see what I had to say about them. Uh, thank you so much for watching. It's always great. You, you know, it's nice to have this community of mostly string players, but some people just love the kind of work I do. Um, I'm always trying to educate. I feel there's not enough education out there for string players. It's so important for you as a string player to really know your instrument, to know how it works and how to make it work the very best possible just to make your life easy. It's hard enough to play the violin. You don't need to make it harder with an instrument with bad setups and things like that. So thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I've got lots of videos about instruments, how to make them work the best. Also, if you like this video, really appreciate it because that way it'll probably make its way out into the world a little bit further and more people can learn. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Keep making beautiful music and see you soon.